Greetings guys, it's Irish. <clears throat> so, the last couple months I have been looking for possibly switching over to BSPWM. I did go through some of my videos and it's been at least three or four years since I've tried it out. And within that time, there has been a bar that has come out, which is so much better than the one that I had to deal with, which was, I believe it was Lemon Bar. And then I think I tried to get another bar working. But if you look at the, the video of adding a bar to BSPWM video, it didn't work out so well. So, uh, plus I've been uh, chatting inside my Discord server, which I will leave a link below. Um, and one of the guys uh, who is there wanted me to do a video on getting Polybar to work inside BSPWM. Now I've never used Polybar until now since I've always been on Xmonad. I've always used Xmobar because it was built in, it was using the same everything. So I've never used it until maybe a few days ago where I was doing some basic research. Uh, this is actually my second take uh, doing this video because I forgot a very important thing. And if you guys know anything about me, I abs I absolutely hate editing. It just it's just a waste of packages and time and stuff like that just to add something. So um, I rarely edit my videos if you can't tell already. So uh, now even though I am in Gentoo, uh, what I'm going to show you should work across all Linux distros. So it doesn't matter. Um, if we actually do a EIX uh, to Polybar, there's really nothing that needs to be done except uh, if you are on IP, uh, excuse me, if you are in Gen 2 and are on i3, or you're going to be using Ulsa or Pulse Audio, you would want to add those. I have. Pulse Audio and I believe Network already built into my world um, make.conf so I don't have to add those so you don't really need to add anything and then same thing with BSPWM oh, I spelled it BSPWM uh, the only thing possibly that you would need is if you have multiple screens is the Xermina um, flag that you would need to do but if you're on say Arch any of the Ubuntu stuff like that you don't have to build anything like that unless you really need something out of there so it's pretty straightforward uh, the next thing you would need to do is it, after it installs it doesn't give you uh, if you try going into it you're not gonna really be able to do a whole lot in there so I suggest making a couple of uh, folders in your .config file. So if we look at that, so one you would need to create is your BSPWM, which the BSPWMRC file is going to sit. And then the next one you would need to do is the SXHKD. Uh, for the remainder of this video, just for simplicity, I'm just going to call it the SX file. Uh, that is your keybinds file, and and <coughs> excuse me. And then if you are actually going to use Polybar, it's you should probably create another one for Polybar. So once it goes in there, if we actually look at the BSPWM through Arch Wiki, um, both it, it does look like this is universal from even inside the Gen2 Wiki. Uh, your config files are going to be in the user share doc BSPWM and then examples. So if you're in, say, Gen2, it will actually say BSPWM and then the version number, and then here's your examples. Now, don't know if this is a Gen2 thing. I don't know if any other distros does this, but for whatever reason, mine came uh, through as zipped still so I had to do bzip2 
to unzip these, but you would want to move your bspwmrc file over to your BSP folder that you just created, and then the sx1rc file also over to your BS or your SX folder that you created. Uh, I'm going to show you briefly what the, the, the stock standard one looks like because I have um, edited this a little bit. So it's pretty bare bones. It just gives you a possible uh, sorry, a possible workspaces here. Uh, border width, your gap, um, the split ratio. So if we open up another thing it's going to split by 0.52. So let us uh, actually take a look at what mine looks like really fast uh, and show you some of the changes that you will have to make. BSP oh, BSP WM then BSP WMRC. So the only things that I changed uh, was the gap. I don't like gaps so I just got rid of that. I added a point focus for your pointer so now if I had this so if we go over to a screen, uh, you'll see I'm down here, then over here, it will follow my cursor. Next thing you'll need to have for polybar for sure is your top padding. Now that is important because that will show you, that will tell a BSPWM where to end the, the top part. We will edit this in a little bit just to show you the differences of it. And then the next thing you'll need to have, I create, I change the split to 0 0.50. Again, you can leave it as default. And then this is the very important thing that I forgot in my uh, other attempt at this video is there's going to be a launch script, which I will talk more about it once we get into the polybar. And you want to put this at the bottom of your bspwmrc file. So it's the .config polybar launch.sh. It's just a little bash script that you'll need to make sure uh, that it tells BSPWM how to launch your your thing because it's so much better than the way that I did it in one of my previous videos. So we are done with that. Uh, we will come back to this but I want to show you what the other one looks like, the SX um, one. Um, I, for the most part, I did keep this stock standard, except I did add a few other things. So by default, your modifier key is your super key. Um, I have been using super key. I, when I first moved over to it, I did use alt because it just felt a little bit better, but I made myself uh, do that. So the only thing that I changed in here is that I added only a few things. One of them was to uh, do my audio and my brightness. So now if I do my brightness thing, you'll see right up here in the poly bar, uh, it will actually go up and down. Same thing with my volume. You'll see it go up and then you'll see it go down. And then if I mute it, it will actually say mute. And then this is a little strange thing. I'll show you a little bit more later after I show you how to do the polybar but I created my uh, keyboard layouts for Dvorak and US and again I'll show it to you a little later but I put that in there just to see if I can control it so let's get to the good part here so once you download polybar it will also create a uh, an entry inside here so all we need to do is just search for polybar. And then this will also create a uh, a file inside user share doc polybar. And for again, for whatever reason, my config again came as BZ2. I don't know if that's a Gen2 thing or what. Because if I look at the BSPWM configuration it just says move this over and it should be fine. It has nothing to do with BZ. So don't know what that's about. But let me move this over here and then we'll Vim 
uh, will actually CD into this. So I'll show you what the launching thing, uh, the launcher script looks like. So I will uh, update my GitHub uh, to incorporate this, but I'll show you where this is located. So if we look at the launcher script here, if I can spell, uh, it's just a very basic uh, bash script saying to if there's any polybar that's running to kill it and then you're pretty much pointing polybar and saying my bar equals for polybar and that's all you need and you do need to make it executable so let's just get out of that going on okay so the I again I can put scripts to this but let me see if it uh, has that on here uh, yeah inside the polybar on the arch wiki here's your running with a WM this tells you how to launch it and this has it but again I will update my github and I will link it below please let me know if I don't have that and then this will tell you where to put it if you're going to launch it through BSPWM. Uh, really quick, I want to show you what it kind of looks like right off the gate. Uh, let me see here. No, that's not it. Uh, sorry about this. No. Oh, yeah. It's right here. Sorry, one more. I do apologize for this. So let's um, get this bigger. So once you launch uh, Polybar, it will have this gap right here. It's the down. It's the bottom gap, and then it's got this little tiny space above, and some pixel spaces on the sides. So I don't like that, but I'll show you what you need to do for that. Uh, let's go back. Uh, I'm going to show you what the default looks like on the left, and then what I have on the right. Um, config. So if you don't want the right-hand side to reach all the way to the left here, that's the width part. So if we change the width to, say, 90% here, save it and then refresh you'll see how the right hand side moved over at least 10 um, by 10 percent so it's now at 90 percent of the top of the screen so we're going to change that back the one thing i do like about polybar is that it has a built-in uh, system tray, which I love about that. I haven't seen one like that since well, i3's uh, bar, status bar. It actually has a built-in one. And it does, unfortunately, when I'm using Xmonad, I have to use something called SysTray. And if I have too many icons open, it actually overlaps some of this stuff. Uh, and to let you know that this is, for the most part, stock standard polybar that's what you're going to get out of the box i plan on doing a separate video on how to theme this a little bit but i did make a couple changes which i will show you next thing i did is i fixed the center so this shouldn't move at all and then the bottom equals false i'm not so sure what that truly does i'm going to guess it doesn't move the bottom that much but Again, uh, the next thing that I did change was the padding. So the padding on the left and on the right. So the padding, uh, we'll say, we'll go in an extreme here. So it's going to be uh, on the left-hand side here. So we'll just do 10 just to show you what this looks like. So if you look at it, the workspace is moved over by 10% or by 10 pixels. 
so you're going to have this gap here. Um, I don't like how it shifts over that kind of stuff, so I just keep it as thus. And same thing with the margins. Now, if we say, we won't go so extreme, but if say the margins on the left, oops, excuse me. So margins on the left, which will be this part here. So it's going to shrink itself uh, a little bit. So it's going to get shrunk. Same thing with the margin. See how it like spaced out some more? But say if we do, say, 0 and refresh it, you'll see how sh um, shrunken that is a little bit. Uh, personally, I just don't like it that way. So I just say 1. I just keep the default on that. Uh, here are the fonts, and I do plan on putting some Font Awesome into it, so um, I do plan on putting some of my Font Awesome up here. Uh, hopefully I do make a video on how to do that. And then here's the modules left, which is the BSPWM. I'll show you what the, the stocks looks like here. Uh, it does come by that by default. So file system, the X backlight, also Pulse Audio, the keyboard, memory, CPU, battery, temperature, date, and power menu. I don't know what the power menu does. I didn't really see much of a difference. So what I have is my backlight, which is that BL, my volume, my keyboard, my battery, my temperature, and then the time. Now, the, I told you earlier about what's going on with my, my keyboard. So... As you see, it says US, which is a different term to show for QWERTY, which is the stock standard. But uh, I do have those shortcut keys to, to switch between Dvorak and uh, QWERTY. But so I am in right now, I am actually in Dvorak. But if I need to refresh it, um, I don't change my keys around, so it would be mod, alt, so it would be Windows key, alt, and then I would hit O for the R, but that doesn't do anything. Actually, if I'm trying to navigate inside BSPWM, it reverts back to QWERTY, which is really strange, so I'm going to have to either rearrange, uh, figure this out, so this should actually say Dvorak or DVK or something similar to that, so because it really throws me off when I'm actually in Dvorak, which for the most part, I'm in that all the time now, except for when I game, which I then I switch back to QWERTY. So that's the, that's the weird thing that I still need to figure out. The battery and the temperature and the date. So I do plan on putting some theming this a little bit more, and I do plan on making that video. So um, not sh not certain what the, this is, but it's WM Restack, and you can either say it's for i3 or BSPWM. I uncommented it, so it would actually work better inside inside BSPWM. Now the nice thing about this is that it's very modular, this uh, poly bar. You can take away modules or you can add them. Because I do know a lot of Arch users who are on BSPWM, some of them actually have a Arch update module. And then it can show you how many updates you have for your system up in the bar. Like how I used to have on i3 when I ran Conkey. So that is really cool, which which I like. Uh, so they do have a BSP module, which is right here. So fuzzy match. Uh, what that does is that if you do have icons, it will actually associate it with one, two, three. Uh, to show you a little bit, I will paste this down below this link. So the fuzzy match. Uh, uses partial matching on labels when assigning icons to workspaces. So you could have code or you could have a symbol and it will associate say like the Firefox symbol with one which I plan on doing. 
Um, and then there's some others like uh, colors and padding and stuff like that I really didn't mess with uh, too much. Um, the one thing that I did uh, mess with, let me see if I can find it. I think it's up inside. The border size. So this is the top part of the poly bar. So I'm going to do something a little extreme here and do five pixels. <clears throat> so now, as you can see, there's this little gap up on top. Uh, actually, let me increase it to say 15, 25. So now you're going to see a 25 um, pixel gap up on top of that bar. So what I it took me a while to figure it out because I would never have guessed border size being the top of it. So, uh, but with the bottom, let me get back to the padding uh, aspect of this. So let me go back. So we are pretty much done with with these. Um, let me quit out of that. Um, CD back back CD. Uh, Save Vim, BSP. So inside the padding, the top padding is the top of your programs. So right now it's at 25%, but say if I had it, um, I don't remember what it comes by default. Um, so 15, I don't think any, you just have to add that and incrementally figure it out. So if I do something like 15, you're going to see how half of it is now covered. And it's going to stay covered until you fix the quote unquote padding aspect of it. So let me see. Oh. So what I'm going to do is fix the padding. So padding is very important with it. Um, and so far that's it. The, the biggest important thing to get polybar to work inside VSPWM is to have this script down here and have it saved in your .config file. Uh, I just created a folder called polybar. But those that is the best way of getting polybar to run inside VSPWM uh, so far. Uh, I do plan on theming this top bar and once I do, I will make a video on how I did it, and hopefully this is a good starting off tutorial on how to get Polybar to work inside other various uh, window managers like i3. I've seen it inside Xmonad also, Herpsluft and DWM, various others, but it can get a little tricky trying to figure out Polybar, but th this took me about a couple hours playing here and there since I don't have much time but let us let me know um, about the whole keyboard thing if any of you guys run BSPWM that really is a strange issue I don't know if it's not registering up on top that it is the poly bar because I do have this set in XMO bar I'm gonna have to take a look at that um, but yeah, so that's what I have, and I will catch you in the next video. Hopefully I'll be, I'll find some time to theme this and to make another video, but work has been crazy, family's been crazy, so I do apologize for that, but I am still around, so I'll catch you guys in the next video.